In the days of Moses, Og, king of Bashan, was a mighty and infamous Amorite king who reigned at Ashtaroth who fought the Israelites on their way to the Promised Land. God gave the Israelites victory over King Og's forces, and Moses and the Israelites took possession of Bashan, a fertile land east of the Jordan River. The victory was significant because of Og's terrifying strength and the Israelite forces' relative inexperience. Leading up to the Israelites' encounter with Og, king of Bashan, was a battle with another Amorite king, Sihon. Moses had requested that Sihon allow the Israelites to pass through his land. They promised not to take any of the Amorites' resources along the way. But instead of granting permission, Sihon mustered his forces and attacked the Israelites. God enabled Moses and the people of Israel to defeat the Amorites and take their land. The story is told in Numbers 21, 21 to 31. Israel sent messengers to say, Sihon, king of the Amorites, let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon would not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and marched out into the wilderness against Israel. When he reached Jahaz, he fought with Israel. On the way to the Promised Land, Israel encountered two more formidable foes, beginning with King Sihon of the Amorites. As Moses had done with the Edomites, Israel requested permission to travel through Sihon's land rather than simply crossing it, promising not to take anything from his fields or vineyards or drink any well water. But like Edom's king, Sihon refused and gathered his entire army to fight Israel. This was a stupid move. Israel, however, put him to the sword and took over his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, but only as far as the Ammonites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sihon king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and had taken from him all his land as far as the Anon. That is why the poet says, Come to Heshbon and let it be rebuilt. Let Sihon's city be restored. Fire went out from Heshbon, a blaze from the city of Sihon. It consumed Ar of Moab, the citizens of Arnon's heights. Woe to you, Moab! You are destroyed, people of Chemosh. He has given up his sons as fugitives and his daughters as captives to Sihon king of the Ammonites. But we have overthrown them. Heshbon's dominion has been destroyed all the way to Dibon. We have demolished them as far as Nafar, which extends to Medabar. So Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. After Moses had sent spies to Jaza, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove out the Amorites who were there. When Israel was attacked, it did not flee quietly. Israel attacked Sihon and conquered his land from the Arnon River to the Jabbok River. They even took King Sihon's city. Then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, and his whole army marched out to meet them in battle at Edri. The Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. Now had to deal with King Og of Bashan, who also sent his entire army against Israel. Og was another Amorite king who posed no threat to Israel because the Lord had already given him and his territory to Israel. Before he even put on his armor, Og's defeat was a foregone conclusion. The Israelites then marched towards Bashan, where King Og confronted them at Edri. 
Because of Og's reputation, the Israelites were terrified. Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his entire army and his land, God assured Moses. The book of Deuteronomy describes the battle between Og's forces and Moses' forces. According to the text, Og ruled over 60 fortified cities, all of which the Israelites conquered. Deuteronomy 3, 3 to 7. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands Og, king of Bashan, and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time, we took all his cities. There was not one of these 60 cities that we did not take from them, the whole region of Argob, Og's kingdom in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. We completely destroyed them, as we had done with Sihon, king of Heshbon. Og, like Sihon, marched out against Israel with his entire army to fight. And, as in the case of Sihon, God had already decided to hand over the king, along with his entire army and land, to Israel. Israel destroyed the entire population and took control of all 60 cities in Og's kingdom, which had the same high walls as Sihon's. When God decided to hand over an enemy to his people, High-walled cities were no match. Later, at the city of Jericho, the most spectacular demonstration of that truth would occur. He was also a very large man, with an iron bed that was nine cubits long and four cubits wide, 13.5 feet long and six feet wide. The inclusion of this detail highlights Og's size. A man in need of this size bed was most likely tall, 10 or 11 feet. Israel defeated Sihon and Og and took control of their vast lands on the Jordan's east bank. Moses then added another parenthetical remark. He was clearly no wimpy king, and his defeat attests to the fact that the Lord is no wimpy deity. Israel does not need to be concerned about the size of its adversaries. All they had to do was remember how big their God was. The half-tribe of Manasseh inherited Og's territory, Joshua 13, 29-30. This is what Moses had given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, that is, to half the family of the descendants of Manasseh, according to its clans. The territory extending from Mahanaim and including all of Bashan, the entire realm of Og king of Bashan, all the settlements of Jair in Bashan, 60 towns, half of Gilead, and Ashtaroth and Edri, the royal cities of Og in Bashan. This was for the descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, for half of the sons of Machir, according to their clans. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab, across the Jordan, east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he promised them. As a result, land was allotted to each tribe. Half of the Manasseh tribe, the Reubenites and the Gadites, had already received their portions on the Jordan River's east bank. Before the nation crossed the Jordan, these tribes were tasked with assisting their brothers and sisters in gaining possession of their own lands. As Moses had promised, the inheritance of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half of the tribe of Manasseh had been assigned to each tribe. The only tribe that did not receive a land inheritance were Levites. This is because God had chosen the Levites to maintain the tabernacle and later the temple and provide priests to do the work of ministry. When the Israelites brought sacrifices to the Lord, a portion was given to the Levites to provide for them. Instead of a plot of land, the Lord, God of Israel, was their inheritance. They had a special relationship with God because of their unique purpose and calling. According to Deuteronomy 3.11, Og was a descendant of the Raphates, 
indicating a man of great stature or giant. See Joshua 12.4. His colossal bed had become famous and, no doubt, had been saved as a memento. Joshua 12.4. And Og, king of Bashan, one of the remnant of the Rephaim, who lived at Ashtaroth and at Edri. The news of the victory spread quickly, instilling fear in the hearts of those in Canaan. Rahab, a Jericho prostitute, believed the Lord had power even over that heavily fortified city, because she and others had heard of the victory over Sihon and Og. Joshua 2, 10 for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the east side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. Joshua 9, 9-10 They said to him, From a very far country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth. Moses used the victory to encourage the Israelites as he left them in charge of Joshua and about to enter Canaan, Deuteronomy 31, 4. Deuteronomy 31, 4 And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. The defeat of Sihon and Og was recounted in the people's praises to the Lord down through the generations as a demonstration of God's faithfulness to his people. Nehemiah 9, 22 Also, you gave them kingdoms and peoples, and allotted to them every corner. So they possessed the land of Sihon, king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Psalm 135, 7-11 Who causes the vapours to arise from the ends of the earth? Who makes lightnings for the rain? Who brings the wind out of his storehouses? Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast? Who sent signs and wonders into the midst of you, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all his servants? Who smote nations many and great, and slew mighty kings? Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. Psalm 136, 18-20 and slew famous kings. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever Sihon, king of the Amorites. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Og is referred to as the last of the Rephaim in Deuteronomy 3:11, and later in the books of Numbers and Joshua. Rephaim is a Hebrew word for giants. The Rephaites, or Rephaim, were a people who lived in Canaan and elsewhere during Moses and Joshua's time. The term Rephaites is a descriptive term, not an ethnic one. It literally means terrible ones. The Rephaim were giants who fought valiantly. Earlier, when the Israelites attempted to enter the Promised Land for the first time, spies reported that the land was inhabited by giants known as Nephilim and sons of Anak. Numbers 13, 32-33 And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. 33. We saw the Nephilim there the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Despite King Og's enormous size and strength, God granted Israel's army victory, and they took possession of the land of Bashan. There is nothing too difficult for God. Nothing is too difficult for him. 
Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God does not tremble in the presence of giants, and his children should not either.